What's up guys, Jacob from Killer Tech here, bringing you guys another video now. This is a video I've really wanted to make for quite a while, and it's something that I think will help you guys out, especially if you're planning on building a new system. Now, what I'm talking about is getting a lower-end CPU with your high-end graphics card. Now, this is something that I have done in my system, mainly because I, over time, built my system up and upgraded things, and I never really got around to upgrading my CPU. But basically what I'm talking about is having a low-end CPU and then having a high-end graphics card. For example, my system, which is at the moment running an R9 290 Tri-X with a pretty low-end AMD FX6350 6-core processor, um, which is running at around 4 GHz, I think. Um, now, this is something that is possible to do. Um, now, the main thing that people will be concerned about when doing something like this is a bottleneck. Now... I think people overstate um, a bottleneck and what it can do. Basically, <laughs> I'm going to try and explain this as simply as possible. A bottleneck is when one of your components, normally it's between the CPU and the GPU. Most commonly, your CPU is lower end and your GPU is higher end, and therefore the GPU is slowed down by the CPU. Now, you can't really get a bottleneck where your GPU slows down your CPU because it doesn't really work like that. Now I'm trying not to go into too much detail over this, but that's basically what a bottleneck is. Um, so you may be held back by your CPU if it's not as high end as your graphics card. Now something I've done of course is exactly that. Um, and the main worry is that you're not going to get anywhere near as much FPS as you would with an i7. Now. I am pretty much able to play any game at 60 FPS or more um, on ultra settings. Now that's with the low end CPU. Now I don't, it depends really what games you're going to play because certain games obviously they have bigger maps, um, they're more CPU intensive um, and yeah if you have a low end CPU like I do, I've struggled running things like Assassin's Creed. Not, I'm still getting 60 FPS but it's not a comfortable 60 FPS. It's um, a lot of movement, not always 60 FPS. So you've got to be careful. And also, if you want to do things like rendering and video editing and things like that, an i7 is probably better for you because if you're rendering, especially, it's going to be a lot faster with an i7. So think about what you're going to, if you, especially if you're building a PC, you've got to think about what you're going to use it for. And obviously, don't go with a low end CPU if you're going to be doing rendering or running games that do require a pretty um, hefty CPU. So yeah, think about what you're going to do, and I think this is just a really good way, especially to save money on your system, um, especially if you're on a very tight budget, um, although if you're on a very tight budget, then you're probably not going to be spending too much on the video card, but if you do have a bit more money to blow, then the video card is definitely the place to blow it. Now, like I said, it's a pretty good way to save money on your build if you're building a new system. And, of course, you can upgrade to a better CPU in the future, but do remember that you may have to upgrade your motherboard and operating system if you do that. Now, there are some limitations to doing this. You can't go with a ridiculously low-end CPU, something like some kind of two-core i3 or something ridiculous like that. It needs to be a gaming-orientated CPU. I think something, really, if it's AMD, it should have at least six cores and probably be running about 4 gigahertz and you can get a CPU like that for about 100 pounds about 150 dollars something like that so just you know you are going to have to spend some money on a CPU I'm not saying that you're going to be able to get something ridiculously cheap that's going to be fine so yeah do spend a bit of money on the CPU I'm not saying you know spend nothing so overall guys do I recommend this if you're on a tight budget then yes it is a great way to go until you can either afford a better CPU or you're just going to stick with the lower end CPU but if you do have the money to spare then I do suggest that you do get either an i7 or a high end i5 because you will definitely see the benefits in gaming if you are running open world games and things like that so for future proofing your system Definitely getting a higher end CPU is a good way to go because for all we know games are probably going to get more CPU intensive um, Especially as the map starts to get bigger and more detailed
So yeah, if you've got the money, I do recommend going with a high-end CPU, but if you're on a pretty budget orientated system, then I think it's a good way to go and a good way to cut a bit of money off um, your build. Because especially now at the moment, if you want a high-end CPU, that's probably going to be one of the most expensive things in your build. I mean, for one of the best i7s you can get, you're looking uh, between a grand and two grand. Even for a decent CPU, you're looking at least 300. So yeah, good way to um, cut a bit of money off your build if that's what you're planning on doing. But Anyway, I hope this has helped you guys out if you're building a system or even if you just found it interesting. Don't forget to leave a like and I will see you guys in my next video.